Ladies and gentlemen, we have a special ask from the Bulletproof Brothers. We have a secret handshake to be in the Bulletproof Club, the Bulletproof Brotherhood. Now, you don't have to be a guy to be in the Brotherhood. You can be a lady. It's open to everybody. But what you need to do is you need to click subscribe. That's all we ask. We toil week in, week out. We work for you. And the only payment we ask, that handshake of trust, is you clicking the subscribe button. Become a subscriber and join the Bulletproof Brotherhood. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another Bulletproof for BJJ podcast. I'm JT and I'm here with my partner in crime, Joey. Hey fam, thanks for joining us. My friends, we get this question a lot and we often, it's not that we don't address it, we just, people often say, oh, how do I get fit for BJJ? Like, what can I do if I can't train? Now, our, our professional stance on this, our general response is, if you need greater endurance on the mat, you should roll more. But some people can't physically get to jiu-jitsu enough. And they ask us, Yo, but what if you can't do jiu-jitsu, what would you do to improve your endurance or your capacity? Yeah, it's also, in my, my opinion, people will have a hard time in a role. Like it'll, it'll gas them out. Yeah. And so then they make the assumption, I need to work on my cardio. Sure. And so they say, what's the best cardio training or what conditioning should I do? Right. And what we're trying to say is like, you should focus more on getting strong and getting mobile and building a body that can go everywhere pretty comfortably. Being more efficient. Yeah. That's going to reduce your need for conditioning. Sure. That, that in, in itself will be, will give you better conditioning. Definitely. So, but, yeah. So we always, so it's like, cause it's real easy to go, oh, you know what? Like. Do these, do these CrossFit workout, do these burpees and sweat a bunch and fucking open up, you know, be breathing heavy. Yeah. But you still move like shit. That's true. So that's true. Movement quality. We, we've touched on it on other episodes. Qualidaji for the Brazilian listeners. Qualidaji. It's so good. It sounds so cool when you say it like that. Um, but here, <laughs> but here's the thing. That's so good. That's so good. <laughs> Remember that scene from um, fucking Wedding Crashes? Yeah. <laughs> At the dinner table, Vince yeah. Ford. Fuck, yeah. it's so good. So... Topic here, my friends, is the fitness routine for BJJ. So when we're talking about fitness, we're talking about uh, how do we improve our endurance specifically for jiu-jitsu. Now, one of the things that people miss here is that is we talk about energy systems. Now, we don't need to get too, too sciencey on this other than to say um, people are like, oh, I've started running or oh, I'm riding my bike. What you should know is that when you're doing steady state cardio, you're working within your capacity in an aerobic way. That is not the energy system you need for jiu-jitsu. Like when you're training um, with Brazilian jiu-jitsu, uh, you are using your kind of a lactic system. So you're producing lactate. That's the pump you feel in your forearms. That's the kind of sick feeling you feel in your guts. That's the, your legs feeling weak. And, you know, it's, it's pushing your, your threshold. So it can get more technical than this when we talk about just being inside your lactic threshold and going beyond that. We're not going to get into that. But what we're going to talk about is working hard for short bursts and what we prefer. So it's not to say, oh, you must X, Y, Z. But if you were to take our advice, here's what we would recommend. Yeah. And just to push on that a touch, I'd say like steady state cardio, it will it will benefit you some way. In the long term. Yeah. But, sure. but it's kind of like, look, if you've only got a little bit of time to give to this, maybe maybe there's a better approach. Maybe well, this sort of stuff might work better for you. Well, typically where this comes up is someone's like, yo, I've got a tournament in 12 weeks. What do I do? Now, I'm going to mention a little piece of Swim, reason. bike, or run? What's it going to be? <laughs> or should it be all? JT's like, fuck off. <laughs> Get the fuck out. <laughs> it's like, yeah, but Nate Diaz, you shut up, fool. Yeah, you try and pump however many bugs a day and run a triathlon. You're going to die, son. Um, no, here's the deal. There was a study done in England of uh, cyclists, uh, high level, like national level cyclists. And this is really interesting. And this is what changed my mind about how to physically prepare for tournaments and other things, how to get fit, so to speak. They got one group of cyclists to do this cycling program on a stationary bike. The other group of cyclists had to cycle with one leg. Hmm. I was like, how do you do that? <laughs> like, <laughs> They took a pedal off on one side and they had that leg stationary, like resting Savage. on something. Could you imagine the chafe on your balls? Oh, bruh. Jesus Christ. Like cycling flat out. Like, Anyway, it's very interesting. They did this 12-week program and then they retested them. 
Now, when they tested the single leg cyclists versus the two leg cyclists, the results were kind of similar. And they're like, whoa, you can get just as fit cycling with one like leg. Like they were testing their fitness, they like VO2 their, max or something? No, they tested them across a training course to see what work rate they could maintain. Okay. The, the single leg cyclists could keep the same RPM, the same wattage output as the double leg cyclists. Right on. But they said, okay, now let's test your untrained leg. The leg they hadn't been using. Now you're going to do the same. They sucked. The leg was totally detrained. And what they're showing is the adaptation there was not central. The heart didn't get bigger. The lungs didn't get like more flexible. It was the enzymatic adaptation in the leg. That leg had got better at dealing with lactate, processing oxygen, all of the shit that you need to do when you work really fucking hard. So in 12 weeks, your heart doesn't get stronger. Your, your, your lungs don't suddenly get more alveoli. It's not that. It's just they're talking about the actual enzymes at the muscles you're working. Mm-hmm. If you work the muscles appropriate to the task, they will adapt because of the – they talk about proximal and distal. Distal is far away. Proximal is close. So it's like a, a distal. Always ad- throwing out that Portuguese. I love it. <laughs> we should, anyway, well, I'll ask sorry, if you knew, if we need to have a if we need to have like a, a translation underneath, <laughs> some of our American listeners have already asked that. Can you even understand what the fuck these guys are saying? Yeah. I, 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 we had that in the comments. It's quite good. Fair, fair. So, what can you learn from this? If you've only got twelve weeks and you're trying to get in as good a shape as you can. The best thing you can do is bathe your muscles in lactate. Like really tolerate the suck, the hard work. Yeah. How can we do this? We've got a few ways. Let's talk about it. In my opinion, the most underrated way for you to get uh, improve your fitness or your tolerance, your work capacity for jiu-jitsu is loaded conditioning. We're talking carries of all descriptions. We're talking kettlebells, barbells, sandbags, you pick it up, you take it up, you take it back. And you might do that for uh, a time set. So you might go, right, I have to carry this for a minute or it might be a distance like 40 meters and you do it as fast as you can. Yeah. So th- the two ways that it, can, it can be approached is you just hanging in there and just suffering and fatiguing and staying working the whole time under load or you working as fast and as hard as you can while also bearing load. Because in jiu-jitsu, you've got to deal with another human. So I think the applicability of it, as opposed to, you know, um, someone just running on a treadmill, is, has way more crossover. Um, it has way more crossover to be carrying your body weight, whether it be another human, a sandbag, a pair of kettlebells, a barbell, in all manner of positions. For time, I believe that has way more crossover than just something very basic like jogging on a treadmill. Yep. Uh, yeah, I'm a big fan of the loaded conditioning. A uh, couple of questions. Well, you on guys, that. actually, you guys, are, you you posted a video not that long ago of you guys doing some work with that. Yeah. In the small group, right? Yep, yep. Well, actually, yeah, it was a one-on-one guy. We did, um, he was asking, he was a, we had a few sessions together and he's like, what's some good conditioning workout did, I can do when, I'm, when I go away? I thought I saw Ray doing oh, some rack carries. We and, have been doing rack carries, you're right. Yeah, sorry. Yeah. Continue. But no, yeah, I, the... This young fella, Dan, said, what can I – he was going traveling and he's a, I think he's a blue belt. He's like, what can I do conditioning-wise, you know, when I'm on the road and don't have a lot? And so I was like, well, you just combine two – I was like, combine two movements, keep the weight moderate and the reps high. Mm. I said, we're already doing some back squat technique work. So I said, how about this? We're going to go like light-ish on the back squat. I want you to do 20 reps and then I want you to pick these two kettlebells up, put them overhead – and walk 50 Whoa, meters 20 reps yeah and so it is and you know and so i wanted to ask like you know, that that's obviously like the back squat 20 reps it's not he wasn't carry he wasn't locomoting yeah he was just staying on the spot but can we use um dynamic like can we just use high rep exercises on the spot to achieve a similar end as say carrying the barbell or carrying uh, it's, the it's bag? not it's not quite the same the, the static the static piece does work chemically but um not not necessarily the same in terms of like there's such a big demand on your nervous system when you move like it's way harder for you to do like they talk about it in strongman like most strongmen love the static monster stuff they love like a deadlift or but it's like when you have to pick something heavy up and move back Walk and forth, with it oh it's so much more demanding because you're shifting your balancing is a lot more involved yeah yeah the routine 
Makes sense. Oh, man, so challenging. So it can it can it can do it, but it's it's not quite the same. So just shout out to my boy James Ross at GS Science. Uh, he had a, a guy who was ex special Russian Russian Special Forces and also World Kettlebell Champion say to him, "Oh, why are you running?" He's like, "Don't run, don't run ten k's. Squat your own body weight a thousand times." What? What? In one session? Yeah. Just just your session is. Put 80 kilos on the bar, squat it a thousand times. It takes as long as it takes. And it's like, this guy could do it. He could do like a rep every three seconds of his body weight nonstop for hours. He's right. a complete psychopath. But he was like, yeah, that, that, that will give you the, the energy demand that you need for, for um, kettlebell lifting. <laughs> I was like, that's one of the most brutal things I ever heard. Yeah, savage. But, uh, but so, so it achieves a similar end, it right? Does, it can. It so, can like, work. say if you were like working out and you didn't have. Say the space to carry much. You're in an apartment or some shit. But you could march. You could march on the spot. March like holding, marching, on, and even yep. step ups. Step ups is one of the most underrated thing. Like it's like a stair climb. Yeah, holding weight. Yeah, it's it it can be it can be pretty tough. But um, what I was going to say is uh, a combo that I always love, which is very easy to do if you have a pair of kettlebells, is set of as many presses as you can until you can't, and then you lock out overhead. So you've got pre fatigue in the shoulders. And then you're carrying as – you just carry it as far as you can until you can't hold it overhead. Then you go to your chest. Then you do kettlebell cleans pretty much until you can't. And then you go to rack position and you got to hold it in rack position. Just walk till you can't. Then you put the kettlebells down by your side and then you do squats like kind of like with the kettlebells outside of your legs, squatting until your legs are cooked, stand up and then farmers walk carry. Ugh. Yeah, that's one. That's one. Fuck round. you up. Yeah, but um, the thing about this is, it flushes the muscles with lactate, and then you've got to really hang in there and, and deal with it as long as you can. And over time, and not that long, if you're prepared to do it, you develop tolerance. You build the enzymes, and then before you know it, you're like, I can, I can deal with this. And a lot of what jujitsu is is dealing with the discomfort. You know, you're like, fuck, yeah. this is hard, but. Like if you're on a guillotine for ages, squeezing yeah. the fuck out of it, and yeah. your arms start to fatigue, and you're like, like that's that's the lactate buildup, isn't it? And you're yeah. like, fuck, man, I'm so gassed right now. So yeah. that sort of position, or you're on the back attacking like a motherfucker, yeah, start to fatigue. It's the same kind of thing, isn't that's it? Right. So it's, you're learning to deal with that. Same that thing response. if you're if you're if you're wrestling and you're getting snapped down, and your neck and your posture, you're trying, your lower back starts to ache because you're like, how can I keep this posture? You, you're going to build that up over time, like through. Um, being able to, we're basically talking about work capacity. It's not just like, oh, what's your VO2 and what's this? It's hard to describe because it's not often that someone goes, oh, here's an 80 kilo sandbag, carry that for as long as you can. This isn't stuff we do anymore. It might have been stuff that we did 100 years ago or more like or in the fields. It's interesting. I actually just came to learn recently of rucking. I didn't, oh, yeah, I didn't yeah, know yeah. about rucking. And I was talking, house talking to him. Well, I was talking to a mate at the gym and I was like, okay. oh, we did. He's like, oh, me and my girl would do some rucking. And I'm like, what's that? And he's like, oh, we grab like a, a sandbag, put on our shoulders and go on the treadmill at, a, at an incline yeah. for like 20 minutes. And I'm like, huh, Matt. Like, it's like a, it's a pretty light. It's a military it's a, thing. Yeah, it's a military thing, but it kind of goes somewhere towards, isn't it? It's like adding a bit of load, yeah. choosing what would typically be like a, like a pretty basic monostructural cardio exercise. Yeah like walking up a yep. slight hill, mm. um, it just fucking sprinkles in that. It's like hot sauce on scrambled eggs. It just gives it that little bit of extra <laughs> it's not like hot deliciousness. <laughs> it's like someone kicked you in the balls and said, all right, now just jump around and I'll kick you in the balls <laughs> again in another 30 seconds. We'll keep this going. But beauty there no, is for, for folks that Rucking like, is loaded conditioning. Yeah, for sure. same thing, right? Um, it's just often done, I think, um, longer duration yes isn't it because like, it's oh, lighter I'm walking, load I'm walking a few k's or it's whatever 10, it's 10 kilos or it's 20 kilos yeah. or if you're Tom Haviland it's a 90 kilo log and you're towing 30 kilos behind you up, <laughs> yeah. up a mountain or some Think shit Liver King Liver King's probably a fan of rucking <laughs> you've got him to where he is let's talk a, about that that's not a recommendation um, but the beauty of it is and if you're listening Simple. and you're like I haven't fucked with this stuff before you're building cardio capacity and you are also building strength. Yes. Versus if you just go for a jog, you are not building any strength. You're really just building some capacity in your, your cardio capacity. So we're getting more return on our time invested. Definitely. And uh, we're going to go to the next thing, which is really hard, which is sprints. All this shit's really hard. <laughs> yeah, it's all hard. <laughs> this is just a list of hard shit. Yeah. But sprints fucking suck. Sprints are tough. And 
look, the, some of the hardest training I ever did was actually hill sprinting. Mm. Yeah, and it's just after the first round, your legs are pretty cooked and you're like, I have to keep generating this output. And you give yourself rest in between, but it's just at no, po- at no point are you enjoying it. Like it's not an enjoyable thing. No, it's, it's horrible. You have to really will yourself to exert yourself as hard as you can over a short distance. Now for me, I would usually keep it to 50 meters or less. Just super hard burst, usually sprint up and then walk down. Wait, this is hill sprinting, but sp- you would, um, there was a time when you were doing sprinting with the Dark Prince, right? Yeah, we're doing it during the COVID lockdown. Nice. And we made it our Friday thing where we just meet up and do um, 10, 10 or 20. I can't remember of these hill sprints over at Sydney Park in um, Alexandria. Yep. It was fucked. It was the most intimidating <laughs> training session. Oh, you know, you'd show up every week. Dread and, it. and you'd almost be hoping the other guy would be Canceled. like, Canceled. Let's just go get a coffee, you know? <laughs> and you're like, we're doing it right. Yeah, cool. Let's go. And, and But it was amazing it, because it was – and here's the thing. Yeah, like this type of training is – very uncomfortable mm. it is easier to go for a jog yeah. it is easier to go lift some weights yeah um so you got to understand that going into it yeah it does hurt more but the the like when i'd finish those sessions i'd be really stoked like fuck yes we just struggled through some shit yeah and i do feel great now you'd be proud of yourself yeah and it builds belief your ability to will yourself to hurt is a huge thing and so many top athletes talk about that psychological edge over someone else who looks like they're weakening. And uh, yeah, I, I saw this shirt. And I thought, I don't quite understand the shirt. It said, do not weaken. But I believe it's a saying, like I think it's this is like a military saying, that you don't want to, appear, like you don't want your opponent to see that you are tired or you're breathing out your mouth. You see it a lot in the UFC where um, they refuse to stool. You know, like, no, nah, I'm not sitting down. I'm good. I'm fresh. Yeah. While the other guy is sitting down, getting ice packs on him. Like, <sighs> and you're standing there looking at him stone cold. Like, I'm good, bro. Yeah. That psychological advantage is. Oh, yeah. It's massive. Yeah. And. Uh, Plays a big part in jujitsu too, right? Yeah. When, you, when you're when you like dying and you the person on top of you has got that cool, calm, psycho vibe. You're like, yeah. oh, God, kill me now. Or maybe you break from a scramble or something and they're straight back into you. And, just and you're you, like, and fuck. You. Yeah. yeah. Non stop. And I definitely believe that sprinting, for me, I would usually do a set of 10 and it would just be as fast as I could up and then kind of casual walk down. Yeah. Fast as I could up, casual walk down. Yeah, it's a nice way to do it. And it it was still tough though. Like the walk down couldn't, it could be, I wish it was longer. I wish it was slower. (laughs) You know, (laughs) because you never recovered. And each time you're accumulating more lactate, more lactate, and you're trying to force your muscles to to produce force and produce energy when... It's just not there. And that, that just generates more lactate. And you're just, you know, at the end of it, you're lucky if you can even walk to the car. But by doing this, you produce the enzymes, you get better at tolerating this shit situation. And you're probably never going to experience that level of kind of fuckness in a roll. Oh, don't know about that. No, no, no. In, in terms of just your quads are cooked. Right, yeah. Like in the same way, if you squat yeah. 40 times, 50, 60 times, you're like... Good, oh yeah, the jelly legs. Yeah, like it's a very, never, it's very honed in on that one specific muscle isolated. group. Isolated. I've never had that from jujitsu. I've had total exhaustion. Yeah, but not like one localized. Other than forearms, I've I'm had thinking. it say when I'm when I'm having big battle with Adam, where I'm trying to pass sure. his guard. Yeah, and you're just in someone's guard, actively defending just, their own. Yeah, and I've been like, oh man, my quads are burning up right now. Yeah, and it's usually when you're like, you give the sweep. You yeah. don't. It's not a conscious decision, but, but you just stop fighting it and they sweep you and you're like, ah. <laughs> <laughs> it's a sweet two points. Yeah. You can take the points. Take the I fucking don't points. But um, so sprinting, the, the, generally the way I encourage people to do it, I mean, I love a barefoot sprint on grass, but that's a luxury. Not everyone has access to a park or anything like that. A way that you can do it, if you, if you live in an apartment building, you don't have parks or – I don't know, the driving's pretty crazy, so you're not prepared to sprint on the road. Running upstairs is another way to do it. If you live in a building, fire escape's good. Yeah. yeah. You just pick a couple flights of stairs and you go, right, I'm just going to hit this. Yeah. I'm just going to run like five sets of stairs and then same thing, kind of jog back down and just do 10 sets. Yeah. It's super efficient. It only actually takes about 20 minutes, if that. Yeah. But man, does it, does it give you bang for your buck? Yeah. 
I once did a workout that kind of got me there, which was uh, seven minutes as many burpees as possible. Oh, I remember you talking about that. And it fucking ruined me for like 24 Dude, hours. It's gross. It's amazing though. Like, uh, you know, we all talk about burpees, like how they're fucked. And they are, and they have a special quality for just pumping fucking blood all around the body, making just your heart work you. super hard. Yes. Yeah. You know, you can, you can, you can get, it's not the same as run stairs at all, but it's somewhere towards yeah. building that lactate threshold. Definitely. Now we're going to go to a special evil, which you may have never heard of, may not have experienced, but you might have, maybe you've seen it and you've wondered what it's about. Sleds, sled training. Mm. Pushing and dragging sleds is some of the hardest conditioning work I've ever done. And I, I would look at this probably similarly to, to your loaded conditioning. You could either do it like not much load on the sled and move it as fast as physically possible, which is particularly brutal, or you load it up real heavy and you're just grinding and pushing. And that has its own quality to it in terms of fatiguing you for just completely cooking. I don't know if you've ever had your car break down. I'm going to share a story right now. Mm, I, uh, story time. Yeah. <laughs> Julian's not, Julian was there. I didn't even tell you this. Probably because I was ashamed. Okay. Um, I don't know if you've ever run out of petrol. Uh, yeah, it's happened to me once. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, it's never happened to me before, actually, until recently. <laughs> because I checked the um, the fuel light came on and it said, I checked the click through and it said, oh, 100 Ks to empty. I was like, fuel light comes, I got 100 Ks? I'm good. Like, I'm not going that far today. Anyway, it was a bit of driving that day. It was just after our meeting uh, in Parramatta. Oh, shit. And it was actually very fortunate. It started to, the car started to like sputter and back and forth just before we we're going to get on the freeway. Wow. And so I was like, I know there's a petrol station only like literally a hundred meters that way, but you have to go down this big dip before you go up and it's kind of sputtering. And I'm like, come on, baby, we can get there. <laughs> and we just got past the dip. We got on the incline and it just died. Oh. Conked out. And I was like, fuck. And I was like, I can push this puppy. My car weighs 1.2 tons. <laughs> Fucking hell. Yeah. Yeah. It's on a hill. I don't know what made me think. I can push this. Like, if it was on a flat, maybe. But holy shit, I'm like Julian, jump in the passenger seat because there's all like we're, there's no there's no shoulder. There's right. just two lanes of traffic. Cars are like, ah, you fucking idiot. Just like, bro, we're broken down. What am I gonna do? I get behind the car and I'm just like, it feels like the car's moving, and then it starts to roll back. And I'm like, we're fucked. <laughs> so I put the handbrake on, Jules. I'm just gonna have to leg it up to the petrol station, get a little. You know, jerry can. Jerry can and get some fuel and come back. <laughs> it wasn't far. Anyway, some young legends, just young tradie dudes, full like Turkish mullet, like, you know, like mad froey, froey hair, sides shaved, but harsh tradie mullet. Yep. Hey, do you need a push? They just come running down the hill. I'm like, yeah. And, but they weren't good blokes, love a good oh, fucking car push. Oh, mate. Yeah. They were young as hell. They just came, they just saw us struggling, pulled in up the road and just came and helped us. Saved the fucking day. But between the three of us, it was brutal. And they weren't like, they weren't strong guys, but they were like, nah, we'll do it. We got it kind of two thirds up the hill. They're like, nah, we got to take a break. Oh my God. <laughs> Dude pulls out a vape. <laughs> <laughs> Quick, you know? hand me that Red Bull. Oh, I need it. <laughs> right, let's go. And we got it around. We got to the petrol station. They saved us. I'm like, boys, can I buy a drink? Can I give you some money? They're like, no, nah, we're good. We got to go to the next job site. Mad. Have a good one, catches. We're like, oh, what legends. The car push. If This is where I'm talking about the sled. If you've ever had to push a car. You probably own a sled. It's your car. <laughs> yeah. And, and that's sometimes what strong men do. They'll tow a car or push yeah. a car. The level of strength is next level. You're max lifting, but you're also trying to move forward. Yeah. So there's this cardio component, which is just indescribable. And it's and it's a constant, uh, correct if I'm wrong, concentric contraction. Yes. There's no eccentric. There's no it. eccentric. Yeah. And, and Which and is unique because if in pretty much every other exercise, there's both. Concentric, eccentric. Yeah. yeah. And it just, it tops out really quickly. You just don't have the capacity concentrically as you do eccentrically. Yeah. Oh my God. So wow. it was a, it was a bit of a story and I thought Julian's never <laughs> going to want to drive with me again. <laughs> Julian now carries a little jerry can with him with a bit of petrol. <laughs> I brought petrol. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, man, the sled push, 
another really terrible workout is a with with sleds, which is quick. It's just twenty kilos on the sled, light sled. Three of us. You do twenty meters. I do twenty meters. He does twenty meters, but it has to be as fast as possible. Right. And so you're timing the time, and you have to kind of try and match the time. Yeah. Right. And you just do it. It's like one part to work, two parts rest. Yeah. But you're working so hard, the two parts rest isn't even enough. Yeah. You're sprinting against resistance, and because you're leaning forward and you're down. This actually compresses your rib cage. It's harder to breathe. Huh. Oh, it's brutal. Yeah. And you basically just do that for 10 minutes. It is some of the hardest 10 minutes of your life. Like you're saying about the burpees for seven minutes. Yeah. Here's the thing, guys. This stuff that we're describing to you is not long, but it's so hard. Yeah, you're not able to do this shit for a long time. No. If you are, then you're not putting enough effort into it. That's right. And it's ba- you're basically jogging. Yeah. Pretty much. Yeah. So I think that's the, I think that's maybe one of the key things too for folks to make this stuff effective is you have to go maximal intensity. Mm. Like you really have to fucking try as hard as you can for that short space of time. More intensity. It's super key. So if you go to a gym and they got a sled track there and you're like, you want to get around it, I mean, talk to a trainer or talk to someone else who's there, give it a try. Do, you know, Sled tracks are usually about 10 meters long. Yep. So you can do an up and back. That's 20 meters. What you can do is put a 20 kilo weight on there, run it up and back as fast as you can, and then rest double the amount of time as it took you to run the thing. Do 10 sets of that and find out what that does to you. Yeah. Or put your body weight on the sled and then just continuous, like go back and forth for as long as you can. You won't get far. Yeah. It's actually way harder than it would seem. So um, last but not least, I want to go to something hard, which we're all aware of, but as good jiu-jitsu people, we avoid wrestling. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. We love watching their highlights. We don't like doing their training. No. <laughs> I'd love to have that athleticism. No, nah, not prepared to do that work. Some of, some of the hardest training I, I, I had to do when I was training at Absolute was just wrestling rounds. It's just like, yeah, we're just going to do three minutes – there's no submissions. It's just as soon as you take someone down, get back up, go again. Yeah. We get a minute break and we then change partners. And just doing three three minute rounds is it's everyone was smoked. Smoked. So you try and get people to roll after that and it's just so sloppy and people <laughs> just the quality of the jujitsu is just gone down. And that's like that's just a warm up. Wrestlers yeah. would do that for like 40 minutes, an hour more. You see this fucking video I shared the other day, Wrestling Prep, that Instagram account? No. And it's just these young wrestling kids just doing the most ridiculous fucking like acrobatic conditioning work. Yeah. I'll show it to you after. But nice. yeah, it's absurd. Like the level of conditioning required to, to wrestle. Yes. Even at a low level, like yeah. the way that us jiu-jitsu people wrestle or, or at a high level, it's, it's, it requires a big fucking gas tank. It's unbelievable. And wrestlers will do, you know, because people say to me, oh, yeah, but buddy Bo Nickel, he runs. And like Jordan Burroughs, he runs. Sure, but these guys are three-time, four-time Olympic gold medalists. They do everything. They do everything. Yeah. They do the gymnastics. They do the rope climbs. They, they fucking do absolutely everything. It's very different to you. So understand that- Shut the fuck up. No, it's not. <laughs> I'm, I'm like, Bo Nickel? Yeah. What are you talking about? I'm, I, all I see is gold. Um, here's the thing. If you have only got... Because people say, oh, I haven't got time to do that. It's bullshit. Obviously, you need a training partner and you do go to jiu-jitsu. But if, even if you just insist with your partner, hey, can we just start standing? Every time like we roll out of bounds or you get a sub or whatever, we start standing. Even just by doing that, it ups the level of oh, intensity. Yeah. 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 A nice one that um, Adam uses advantage is like we'll do six-minute rounds first three or first two minutes or three minutes is wrestling only. Right. And so then he'll be like, all right, now it's just round. And so then you just, whatever happens, go for it. Yeah. But that's real nice. Cause it kind of, it cooks you and then you got to keep rolling for a few minutes, rolling. you know? Yeah. It's a nice way to bring a bit of fatigue to your jiu-jitsu. Definitely. And I, I think it's this idea guys that you are inducing a certain level of fatigue that you can't hide from. You can't recover from it. Therefore, how do you function under fatigue and build the tolerance there and in my opinion the you know people will talk about all kinds of things but i'm like oh are you wrestling nope and i I get i get a similar thing from judo i think there's a bigger strength component to judo because you can grip so it's not that you can stall but you 
if you fight harder with your strength, you don't have to move as much. Right. So that's that's a bias within judo because you can grip, but wrestling it's movement. You you got to move. Now this is this is kind of this is not wrestling related, but just thinking of a drill that I've done with Adam again. That's been it's been like sprinting with jujitsu. It's been the uh, one person in guard, one person trying to pass, and you've got fifteen seconds to pass. Oh, the blitz drill. The blitz as yeah. hard as you can. Yeah. And then I think it's a five second reset. New partner. Yeah. And it's fucked. <laughs> like it's fifteen <laughs> seconds as hard as you can trying to pass person on the bottom trying as hard as they can to sweep or you know they're generally not going to submit yeah it's going to be like retain guard or sweep yeah and uh and then it's like cool next one next one next you do i don't know we do like eight rounds of that you yeah. fucking smoke it does get you right because here's the thing which a lot of people don't realize because you you may not you might only experience it maybe once a week if you have that absolute war with somebody and then you're both on the ground fighting to breathe that once you cross your threshold once you redline it takes you forever to come back. Yeah. Once you completely max out, you're totally full of lactate, your heart rate is absolutely jacked. To come back down to 100 beats a minute is, is going to take 5, 10 minutes. Like it's going to take a full recovery. And then you're pretty shattered. Uh, another good one, which I got from judo, which is like the judo beep test. You have, one, you have two partners and they're uh, about 5 or 6 meters apart. You run... You have to throw that person. Then you do like a dive roll and then you do a takedown. Hmm. You run and you're just going back and forth, back and forth. Yeah. You have to do that continuously for five minutes. Oh, that fuck you up. It is grotesque. But what that does for your for your work capacity is incredible because it's very specific. Yeah. And that's really what it's all about. We are trying to get you to stress your bodies in a way that's gonna be similar to jiu-jitsu or even harder than what you would experience at jiu-jitsu so when you get there it's not as tough train hard fight easy oh that's what they say that's what they say there you go fam um what the fuck was i going to say it, wherever you're listening to this please subscribe to the channel that's the one thing that you can do to be part of this brotherhood Oof. we put this shit out here every week for you guys multiple times per week all we ask for one thing in return is to subscribe to the show whatever platform you watch it on thank you thank you